concerning the man police were looking for in a triple fatal stabbing. Jeremy Arrington was barricaded inside. Overwhelmed with sadness and disbelief have been contributing to a memorial on Hedden Terrace in Newark where 11-year-old Aljahone Whitehurst and his 8-year-old sister Ariel Whitehurst and 23-year-old Syasia McBurrows were viciously stabbed to death. 375 years of jail time, no chance of parole until over 250 of those years have been served. In short, no chance of parole at all, no sympathy from anyone and not a single doubt that you might not deserve to get a sentencing like this. No one speaking in your favour, no one looking to defend you and no one interested in trying to lessen the sentencing. The question is, what would you have to do to get a sentence like that? Well, you would need to kill three people and two of them would need to be children. Today we're going to find out all the dirty, ghastly and downright terrifying details that led up to such a crime. In fact, there are some who were involved that might have been quoted as calling this a bloodbath, a terrible tragedy and the most grisly murder that the city has ever seen. You might be wondering if this is a big name serial killer that's about to be covered or someone that went on a slaughtering spree that might have made it onto national television. You would be wrong. The name behind the crime is actually a simple normal man. Someone that is lacking the devil horns and cloven hooves you might be picturing but you would not be out of place depicting with a pitchfork and a devil's tail. In fact, there are some out there who have already done exactly that. This is the chilling tale of Jeremy Arrington, a New Jersey man who was sentenced for the brutal murder of two children and a college student after a Facebook post sent him into an absolute fury. After one of the stabbing victims reposted a police alert on Facebook, one which named Jeremy Arrington as a suspect in a previous sexual assault case and a shooting, the man seemingly lost control of himself and went into a blind rage. Now, it should be noted, this is not the first time where Jeremy's anger has gotten the best of him. He has several previous convictions for violent crimes on his record and was being investigated for a third act of violence against a woman. Knowing even that small fact, you might be able to start forming a persona for Jeremy Arrington in your mind's eye. I promise you, whatever you might be imagining, it needs to be ramped up, up, up to a 20. There are very few words that accurately describe the likes of Jeremy Arrington. You know I like to use the word Muppet, Moron, Idiot. But the words that describe Jeremy best are not legally allowed on YouTube. Some call it, see you next Tuesday. This is a man who seems to have no remorse for his actions and who had no qualms about killing three people. With the intention of taking the lives of four others had police not intervened when they did. The Whitehurst family lived in Essex, New Jersey and were having a pleasant day when Jeremy Arrington forced his way into the Whitehurst residence. There were seven people in the home a mix of the Whitehurst family and guests that they had over at the time. This included five children under the age of 16 and two young women. It should have just been any other day, pleasant, maybe a little on the loud side with all those children running about. But Jeremy Arrington made it clear that no one would ever forget that he had stopped by that day. He made sure that no one would ever forget the terrible events of November the 5th, 2016. The family and their guests were forced into the kitchen where he tied up the seven residents of the home and tortured them with kitchen knives, repeatedly stabbing the victims. A seventh victim, an autistic child who was visiting the Whitehurst children, 
managed to escape from the kitchen, though details of how this were managed have been kept under wraps from the general public. A side note on this. I, as you guys know, get full case files, go through what happened, tell you the story. So I contacted the prosecutor's office of Essex County. Do you know what they said to me? They said, uh, we are not aware of any records. I'm thinking this guy's got 300 years in prison. How do you not have a record of this? But I'm sure there was a communication wires crossed somewhere. But I wasn't overly upset by this. A lot of children are involved and I would rather their names be kept private for obvious reasons. After all, their lives have been changed. It would never be the same. The kids will never forget what happened on that day and their friends and to their loved ones. And why should we make it even worse by spreading their name out to the public masses so that they can be harassed while they're at school and out with their loved ones? But finally, what are your thoughts on this anyway? Do you think the names of children in case files should be protected as they are? What if the child himself is a criminal? Do you think they should be protected? Comment, let me know. But whatever your views are on the name, we can all agree that one of the children were able to pull themselves out of the kitchen and escape from Jeremy's wrath. She managed to get a hold of the phone and move to the other end of the house. Jeremy Arrington was distracted with the rest of the victims. After locking herself in the closet, the child was able to get a hold of the police and call for help to arrive. It said that they stayed on the phone with her until help arrived and though she was injured in the attack, she made a full recovery after the fact. Unfortunately for three of the victims of the attack, help would come far too late. Jeremy was not planning on taking any prisoners. He wasn't there just to scare these individuals. He had gone into such a rage that his only goal was to inflict as much pain and terror as possible. It is unknown what might have driven him to decide that this was the right cause of action. It's believed that before this Facebook post was made that Jeremy Arrington had no problems with the Whitehurst family and no previous altercations with anyone involved. The post that was made on Facebook was not a direct account made by the Whitehurst family. Rather, it was something that had been made by someone else, an unidentified source, and merely reposted. And yet, there was something about this that made Jeremy so furious, he was willing to do the absolute possible, the most deranged, terrible crime anyone could think of. While four members of the attack survived, including the little girl who hid in the closet, there were three victims who sadly did not live to see the next day. These include seven-year-old Ariel Little Whitehurst, her brother Al Jahon Whitehurst, who was 11 years old, and a 23-year-old family friend who had been visiting. Syasia McBurrows were killed during the evasion of 2016. Between the multiple lacerations that they received and the blood loss, they had little chance of surviving. Three lives snuffed out in a span of only a few hours. A few hours that will haunt the lives of the survivors until the day they finally pass on and join their family on the other side. The mother of the two young children and her two 13-year-old twins were stabbed multiple times but managed to survive. This encounter left two families broken and missing pieces that can never be regained. While Ariel and Al Jahon were stabbed to death, McBurrows, the visiting college student who had shared the Facebook post, was shot after she was tied up in the kitchen and tortured with knives. One could argue that the others should have been let go at the time or perhaps never been involved in the first place. But there are no arguments that can explain away the cruel actions of Jeremy Arrington. Clearly, this was not the reaction of a rational man. It was the action of someone who was unhinged, cruel and willing to do the unthinkable simply to make themselves feel better. Multiple SWAT team members responded after being told that Arrington was barricaded inside a building. At the time, Newark Mayor Ras Baraka had called the attack one of the most tragic and savage he's seen. Now, five years later, Jeremy has been convicted. He was tried for 28 charges relating to the home invasion and received 
three life sentences. He was then given an additional consecutive 50 year sentence for each of the three victims who managed to survive their brutal assault. There is, simply put, no chance of parole for Jeremy as he would need to serve 281 years before he would even be eligible for it. And there is no amount of good behaviour that could justify releasing a man that has done such a heinous act. The assault itself took place in broad daylight and resulted in an armed standoff with police at the Whitehurst residence. Despite all of this, Jeremy was arrested on the same day. When many people think about such horrid bloodbaths, they picture events that happened years and years ago, but this crime was only committed in 2016. Those who worked on the case described the crime scene as a house of horrors and referred to Jeremy as a person of pure evil. As the facts about the case have come out, it's hard to deny either of those things as being the truth. The trial lasted 10 days and the counts that he was convicted of included murder, attempted murder, burglary, criminal restraint and several more. During the course of the trial, 25 people took to the stand to testify, most of them testifying against the behaviour of Jeremy Arrington. And when I read this, I thought to myself, I don't even know 25 people myself. So imagine these 25 people more or less talking shit about you. Wow. There was not a character witness in the entire lot of them who was willing to say a good thing about Jeremy. Instead, even more stories about past acts of violence came out. The court managed to establish that Jeremy had a history of losing his temper and acting irrationally, as well as having a history of acting out in manners that were not socially correct. These are the small details in a case where as a man it makes my dick itch. You know when I read that losing his temper, you know what that is? Simple impatience. I've said it before, as a man, if you're angry, yeah, the anger comes in, your brain processes it. A moment of patience cures everything. You, something happens, anger comes, you just sit and you wait. But you know who doesn't wait? You know who doesn't sit? You know who becomes impatient? Children. And I mean that respectfully to children, but that's the difference between immaturity and maturity. Jeremy was prone to fits of violence. As mentioned before, this was far from his first run-in with police. He had previously been investigated for sexual assault and was actively being investigated for a shooting elsewhere in the county. There were also several previous assault charges against him, some that he had been convicted of and others that he had been dropped when no concrete evidence could be surfaced. The circumstantial evidence was still enough to make him a prime suspect in other cases later on. His personal relations were strained, he had few friends and those who he did spend a lot of time around were more than happy to talk about Jeremy's short temper. The surviving victims were also allowed to speak out against Jeremy in what we are sure must have been a truly harrowing situation for them. Other witnesses included several neighbours that were in the area and members of the responding police force. We cannot imagine what it must have been like facing down your attacker in court five years after being forced to watch him kill two of your children. That is something that cannot be stressed enough. Not only does something happen so heinous to yourself, you gotta wait five years before you get to face your accuser and even then you don't get to face anything because the mother the family, the relatives, they don't get to ask questions of the suspect. They get to make a statement in court of how they feel, get it off their chest. But where's the trial for the well-being of the family? Where's their compensation? I know they might be eligible for monetary compensation, but there's no price on your kids. Miss Whitehurst did not just lose two of her children. She was not just brutally attacked and injured. While she was tied up in the chair, she was forced to watch this man torture her children and kill them, unable to get out of her bonds, unable to do anything to help them, unable to stop Jeremy 
from hurting them. And let's be honest, the poor woman probably didn't even know what the man was doing there. And it's unable to do this and unable to do that. I'm a father myself, many of you know this. Whenever someone makes a joke to my son, puts him down a little bit or you know whatever it is, I always take it personally and I always get sensitive about it. In my mind, I don't always express it, but I do take it personally even if it's a joke. You want to know why? Because that's my boy. That's a love for my child. How dare you put my child down? Nine times out of ten, that's not even what's going on. But such is the care and attention I have for my son. I can only imagine how helpless the mother must have felt. I mean, remember, it wasn't the Whitehursts that posted his visage on Facebook, but the visiting college student. But with that being said, let me go into detail on what actually happened in the house. It had been the middle of the day. Miss Whitehurst had company over. This company included at least one young child and a close family friend. During the middle of the day, her front door was forced open and Jeremy forced his way into the house. He had a loaded gun with him. He began shouting, ranting. The surviving witnesses said, ranting and raving, acting truly unhinged. The man had been screaming. He had begun threatening them. The family was forced into the kitchen, all seven of them, and Jeremy, with his gun loaded and drawn, began to tie them up. Somehow, a young girl managed to escape from the kitchen. She locked herself in a closet at the other end of the house and called the police. But while this happened, Jeremy was moving fast. One of the remaining six members of the household were tied up. He pulled the kitchen knives out of their drawers. These knives were normally used to prepare love-filled meals for the family, something that Miss Whitehurst took great pride in. That day, however, they were turned into utensils of terror. One cut, and then another, and then another. Jeremy tortured the members of the Whitehurst household. And when he decided that he was done, be it that he was growing bored, or that he simply had decided that he was wasting too much time and drawing it out for too long, he pulled out his gun and he shot and killed McBurrows. Imagine being Miss Whitehurst and listening to your children screaming for help, sobbing, crying out in pain. Imagine twisting your hands, trying to break out of the bindings until your ropes were rubbed raw and bloody. Screaming yourself, trying to draw your assailant's attention away from the children, trying to get him to focus on yourself and not your young loved ones. Imagine knowing that your daughter was not moving anymore. Imagine knowing that your son is no longer crying, watching your two children be not only killed but tortured and stabbed to death. They were not even given the small kindness of a quick death. And then imagine having to go into court, sitting behind the counter, looking him in the eyes while you testify against him. My heart goes out to her. My heart goes out to her whole family. Now during the trial, Jeremy attempted to apologize for his actions, though the words fell on understandably deaf ears. The result of this trial can be considered a boon for the family involved. They will never get their loved ones back, but at least the man who took them is finally behind bars. New Jersey is one of the 18 states that does not have the death penalty, which is why Jeremy instead received a set of stacked life sentences. There are some who argue that this amounts to the same punishment as receiving the death sentence in other states, and some who argue that this is not nearly enough for such a terrible act. But I want to put this to you. I try to put myself into the head of the, the, the family. If someone did that to me, I don't think I'd want the death penalty. But what I would want is for them to receive some kind of mental torture. Maybe prison is that. Do you understand what I'm saying? And the reason why is because for the Whitehurst family, they are left by themselves to accept what happened and to get over it themselves. As I said, there's no court case for their well-being. So if Jeremy dies, we'll never see him again. And I know when, when, when these criminals are in prison, we don't generally see them again but at least the family have some kind of access to get some kind of answers should they need them. 
as I said, time is the only thing that can heal this for them. While Jeremy in jail is still going to get fed every day. He's still going to get washed every other day or whenever it is. Yes, he might be scared that other inmates are going to think this guy killed children and in jail they have some kind of code where if you hurt children it's not good, blah, 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 blah. But eventually he'll get over it. It's not like for the 70, 80, 90 years he'll spend in prison before he dies. It's not like every single day people are going to remind him of it. You see what I'm saying? So my last question to you is, look, look with your eyes. When you see Jeremy, what do you actually see? Look at his face. Look at his demeanor. Do you know what I see? I don't see a man who's mentally disturbed. I mean, he is. But I mean, like, you know, from a professional point of view, right? He was found fit to stand trial. I don't think he has some kind of schizophrenia or a severe schizophrenia, sorry, or anything of that nature. Maybe some chemical imbalances. I honestly just see a moron. Like I said, this guy was just a see you next Tuesday. Thank you for watching.